I'm Amanda. And I'm Charles. This is the Capital Friendly Podcast. Hey, Amanda, guess what? What? It's 70 degrees outside. Woo! Yes, spring is here. Spring is here. My allergies have let me know. Yes. <laughs> but I'm glad we have finally have more daylight in the daytime. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to soak up all those sun rays. Yes. Yeah. I'm very excited for cherry blossom yes, season. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. It's beautiful. Yes. And uh, we just celebrated my birthday in March. <gasps> Happy yes. birthday! Yes, so I'm, I'm a March birthday, so uh, March is always a great month. Yeah. Plus, it's Women's History Month. It's very yes. true. Yes, so uh, my birthday on this year fell on International Women's Day. Awesome. Yes, so I'm glad that the airport is um, highlighting the achievements of our uh, women employees and um, all the great things that they do and they'll continue to do at the airport. Yeah, we have a speaker series mm-hmm. that kicked off this month actually featuring our executive vice president, Krissa Westerlund. Yes, so yes. that was really awesome. And uh, I believe there's gonna be another one featuring Juanita Britton. Yeah, she's a concessionaire at the airport. Yeah. So Krissa's conversation, um, I, I tuned in, it was great yeah. to hear her story about how she got started at the airport and what she, all the work that she does to help this uh, the airport run. Yeah, I've had the great privilege of working with her on many projects mm-hmm. and she's really great to work with. In my time so far as chief revenue officer, I've noticed several of the more highly paid positions have historically almost always been filled with external candidates. And this was largely because they involve specialized skills that there was no internal path to develop. So all of the revenue organization leaders have now been tasked with ensuring that every higher level position has an internal development path. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the conversation. Um, she really gave a lot of great advice to women who want to advance in their career and how she was able to be successful. Um, and it was just a very inspiring story um, from where she started to where she is now. Yeah, yeah I really, I really liked the part where she was talking about how, she, you know, she had help at home. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's really important because so many women think that they have to do it all. Yeah. And yeah. that's just impossible. Yep. So to recognize the fact that, you know, she got to where she is because she had a great nanny at home, mm-hmm. I think that was really awesome. You know, first and foremost, I would say making sure that the people that you love are taken care of. Um, for me, that meant hitting the jackpot with an incredible nanny. Uh, I was able to work every day knowing that my kids were getting amazing love and care. And my youngest is 18 now, and I am still friends with our former nanny. So that just created a safe environment for them and a safe environment for me uh, during the period I was at work to stay focused. Yeah, we all need a support system. Absolutely. So your birthday must be March 8th. Yeah, March 8th. Mine's April 8th. Wow, one month apart. Look at us. (laughs) Yes. I actually have some very exciting travel coming up. Where are you going? I Well, I just wrapped up a trip to Costa Rica. Okay. So that was nice. fun. And my long-awaited trip to Japan is happening in April. Wow, that's going to be fun. So much fun. I'm stoked. Yeah. I don't get to go to Japan. Chicago in the spring. <laughs> I'll take that too. They're a little different. <laughs> I recommend both. But yes, if you ever get a chance to go to Japan, definitely take it. Great. I'm also excited because my upcoming trips mean a visit to the Capital ah, One Lounge. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm not saying I'm more excited about that <laughs> than the trip, but I'm very excited. So. <laughs> so today we are talking to Danielle Morgan. She is the executive staff coordinator over at DCA. And I think she's going to have a lot of interesting perspective on, you know, her role at the airport she came in you know without really an aviation degree Mm -hmm, or any mm -hmm. kind of specific aviation interest but really evolved that role and talks a lot about her interest and passion for aviation and how it's grown great i look forward to that conversation so joining us today is Danielle Morgan. She is the executive staff coordinator over at DCA. Welcome, Danielle. Thanks, Amanda. Hey, Charles. How's it going? Welcome to the podcast. Great. Thanks for inviting me. Excited to be here. Yeah, we're thrilled to have you. Why don't we start by just telling us a little bit about yourself and your career and how you kind of came into this role at the airport. Great, happy to. So my story um, may be a little bit different than what you expect in my position. So I actually didn't study aviation, Mm -hmm. and I actually didn't think about a career in aviation until I was an adult. I actually studied political science at American University in DC, and my intention at the time was to be in government. 
Upon graduation, I decided to go and work for a nonprofit called the Close-Up Foundation. And what they do is they teach civics and government to young people, mostly high school students. And so I worked there as a teacher, and then I worked in their community outreach department. And as part of my time there in community outreach, I actually got to travel across the globe to the Marianas Islands. And there I worked with students on identifying kind of problems in their community and developing action plans on how to solve those problems. And so after six years there, I actually saw a posting at the airport's authority for a community outreach coordinator and thought that was right up my alley. So I applied, I got the job. And in that position, I actually worked largely with local schools doing outreach, um, talking about how airports operate and inspiring kids to careers in aviation. And another part of the job was I worked with the federal government on bringing aviation directors to our airports to see our airports, learn about what we do, and then take best practices back to their airports and their developing nations. And so it was at that point that I really started to develop that love of operations and figuring that this is where I want to be. And, you know, the people that were visiting weren't the only ones that were learning about aviation. That's mm -hmm. really where I got my mm -hmm. aviation schooling was through all the different presentations that we set up for these other groups. So I worked there for six years as well. Six is kind of my lucky number. <laughs> and at that point, I, the airport's authority posted a position uh, as a customer service manager mm -hmm. at Reagan National. And so I saw this as my ticket into operations. Um, it was a brand new position, which I think anybody who has an opportunity to take a job where it's the first of that mm -hmm, position, mm -hmm. it's, it's fantastic because you really can develop that position into what you want. Yeah. And so um, I took the job. Most people, when I would say I worked in customer service, said, are you crazy? Why would you ever <laughs> want to work in customer service at an airport? But it really was um, a very rewarding position. You know, people don't understand airports. And so when they complain, it's just, you know, oh, Reagan National did blah, 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 blah. And so my job really was to connect people with those that could actually affect their travel and make their travel experience better. So once again, I did that for six years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then um, my current job opportunity uh, came up as executive staff coordinator. And how long have you been in this role? Six years. Six wow. years. Wow. So it's time for something, so, time for a promotion. Know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, you know, anything's possible. But um, I really feel like right now I have the best position in the entire airport, or at least um, for the airport's authority. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. So what's a day in the life like for you? Yeah, so, so my job, my job title doesn't really describe too mm -hmm, much as mm -hmm. to what I do. So the way I like to describe it is I'm really – the chief of staff for the airport manager. So the mm. airport manager, you know, airports really are run like a city, it's mm. like a mini city. Yeah, and we've so heard the, that a couple times. So. Yeah, so you know, the airport manager is really kind of like the mayor of the city. Mm -hmm. And so my job is really to support him in the running of the airport. So whatever he needs, you know, I'm kind of there to help fill in all the details. So, you know, what that means is it could be attending meetings for him, It's getting people in front of him to talk about the issues that are currently facing the airport so he can make informed decisions. You know, might be looking at how certain things impact the budget. It might be uh, making sure that he hears from all different sides on a certain issue. Um, it could be putting together presentations for his boss, the CEO. You know, it could just be as simple as walking around the airport and, you know, just observing what's going on and, and talking to people because a lot of this job is making sure when a problem happens that you know who are the people that the airport mm -hmm. manager needs to speak to, to to solve that problem. Absolutely. What are some of the standout moments of your career in aviation or at the airport's authority in general so far? Yeah, so I think my favorite um, accomplishment here at the airport's authority is really starting the Wings for All program. Mm -hmm. So when I was in customer service, um, my counterpart and I from Dulles, we went to this airport conference on customer service, and there was a speaker 
a, a woman who had arranged to go to Disney World with her family. And she, her family, um, she had one child with autism and one without. And when they got to the airport for their vacation that they were all looking so forward to, her one child with autism was not able to get on the airplane. Mm-hmm. And so the husband um, took the child without autism to Disney and she stayed home with her other child. And she swore to the community, to herself, that she was going to do something that enabled other families to not have to go through what she did. Mm -hmm. And her story really resonated with me. And so she had started this Wings for, it was Wings for Autism, and then it's been expanded to Wings for All. So Mm -hmm. it's for families that have any disability in their family. And it's basically a day where they come to the airport and practice the steps on getting on a flight. So um, really was proud to bring that to Reagan National. And then, you know, I'd say also probably one of the other biggest highlights of my career so far has really been just getting through Project Journey construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Goodbye 35X. (laughs) Exactly. So, you know, as customer service manager, saying goodbye to Gate 35X (laughs) was huge. It was definitely a relief. And and seeing uh, Concourse E open up, which is absolutely beautiful. You know, everybody loves Reagan National. I Mm -hmm. always hear from people is, you know, that's such a great airport. You know, I don't want to be part of the team that messes up Reagan National (laughs) because of construction. So we worked really hard to um, minimize impacts, you know, whether it's putting construction at night or listening to noise levels of construction or making sure the messaging to the customer is is appropriate and paths around the construction were were feasible. So, um, you know, that that piece of the construction is done and, you know, we've gotten very good feedback from it. So glad to say that we got through that piece of construction. Um, with just in time possible. for more construction. Just in time for more. <laughs> yes, but that's, you know, the thing I'm looking forward to now is just kind of now we got the construction of the hold rooms and the new concessions coming in. Um, that will really just add to the experience even more. Yeah. Danielle, you, you have a fun job. Um, what's your favorite thing about working at the airport? You know, I think my favorite thing is just that every day is different. Mm-hmm. So many people travel through Reagan National Airport and each person has their own story, has their own reason for being here. And, you know, I get to sit in a position that really just sees the the big picture of everything that's going on in the airport. So, you know, I'm I'm never bored. It's never a job (laughs) where I, you know, sit and say, you know, what am I going to do today? Because kind of work just kind of hits me in the face when I get here. (laughs) Yeah. What I mean, so DCA has changed a lot during your time here. What are some of your personal favorite changes that you've seen? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly I've been here 17 years now, so there have been a lot of changes. I think two things that really kind of strike me is one is just kind of the change of the experience of the airport. You know, nowadays we're you know, looking to make the customer experience more comfortable. You know, you see restaurants that have more um, local flavor Mm -hmm. and just kind of creating a sense of place in the airports, which I don't think was around, you know, when I first started here. The other big significant change, I think, is the technology changes that we've seen in in my time, Um, especially when it comes to communicating with the customer. You know, when I first started in customer service, it was um, pamphlets, you know, (laughs) brochures that customers filled out for their customer comments. And, you know, we did snail mail back to the customer. And so, you know, certainly we've come a long way to then go into email and then social media. And, you know, that was one of my first things for the airports authority was I did Twitter when Twitter first started, Mm -hmm. along with a zillion other things. <laughs> and so, you know, and today now it's grown so much. There's so many other digital channels that it needed to move to, you know, a whole nother department and yeah. to, to handle that communication. So, um, you know, we've really just seen, you know, with the increase in changes in technology, just a greater ability to communicate with our customers in the moment. Yeah. Great. So I know we have a listener today who's saying, you know what, when I grow up, I want to be like Danielle. <laughs> Uh, if you could give any advice to anyone um, out there who's looking to start a career in, at the airport or in, in aviation, 
Uh, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I would just tell them to go for it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's so many careers out there in at airports or even related to aviation. I mean, last year we determined there were about 20,000 different jobs that mm-hmm. were related to working at Reagan National. I mean, so there's so many different ways that you can touch aviation without necessarily doing what you normally think of of aviation. You know, there are a lot of people that just love airplanes and and love the idea of being in such a dynamic environment that's so vibrant and changing every day. So, you know, I would say just go for it. And, you know, maybe one of your interests is something that you can easily get a job here. Mm -hmm. And then once you kind of get in the door, you learn more of what's at the airport and you talk to people about other opportunities that are available. So it's definitely good to kind of get your foot in the door and go from there. Yeah. Aviation is pretty male driven world here. Um, But you know, it is Women's History Month and we're seeing more and more women entering aviation. I think um, JetBlue just hired their first or the first woman CEO. So that is really exciting. What do you think the future looks like for women in aviation? Yeah, I think the future is very promising. I mean, certainly since I've been here, I've seen more women take leadership positions across the airport, uh, which is definitely very promising and very important for the industry. Um, We've also seen kind of a greater commitment of organizations Mm -hmm. to, Mm -hmm. you know, promoting STEM and aviation careers to girls in schools. I mean, each fall, a signature flight support hosts a big girls in aviation program down at their hangar and invites the airport community and hundreds of local girls you know come to that event so you know i'd like to think that you know all that future investment in the future will pay off with more girls in aviation and um, developing into leaders in aviation yeah so do you have a favorite spot in the airport? And if so, what is it or where is it? Yeah, so it's hard not to mm-hmm. say looking out the windows <laughs> on National <laughs> Hall. I mean, to be able to look out the windows and see the airfield and the operations of the airport with the nation's capital in the background, mm-hmm. it's yeah. just, you, you can't beat it. I mean, we're probably I mean, the only airport that, that has that. Um, this time of year, I'd also have to say, um, going to an honor flight. Mm. You know, honor flights are starting up here um, in April. And so to be able to see the veterans coming in to this airport to view their monuments and to witness, you know, customers who are just minding their own business, going on their own journey, um, start applauding when the honor flight's announced and they're entering into the terminal and to see the veterans, you know, get all emotional from the response of just passengers recognizing them and their services is really wonderful. For those who are who are unaware, what is an honor flight? Yeah, so an honor flight is when um, there's a nonprofit that organizes veterans from across the country to fly into D.C. to mm-hmm. um, go down to their monuments. So, mm-hmm. for instance, Vietnam veterans will come in on a flight. Um, when they arrive here in D.C., The fire department will greet them with a water arch Mm -hmm, over top mm -hmm. of the airplane, um, and then they'll come in. Um, There's usually, you know, an announcement, so everyone in the terminal will know that they're arriving, and so you'll usually see customers standing up and applauding. Sometimes we'll have bands to greet them, Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, the the group that Honor Flight Network that organizes it. They'll sometimes bring in school groups from the local area, and, um, and then the veterans are bussed down to see their monument um, and then they return you know sometimes it's the same day mm-hmm. um, and sometimes they'll stay overnight but it's it's pretty impactful to, yeah. to witness yeah it's a cool experience if you've never been to one you should mm-hmm. check it out great I will. schedule online so this is our last question but we do like to ask everybody who is on our podcast but where are you flying to next yeah so no exotic trips to the marianas islands uh, <laughs> right now so you know as a mom of two young kids we're actually we're planning a trip to disney this um mm-hmm. summer so that that's where we'll be headed to orlando so are there any parting words you want to leave the audience yeah so i, I mean i would just say that you know, even as somebody who works at an airport, you know, it, 
navigating airports can be challenging. And so, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, anybody that's traveling through an airport, make sure that they leave plenty of time uh, to get to the airport, especially any working moms out there. I know you got a <laughs> lot going on. Um, so you never know um, what your kid's going to tuck in their carry-on bag at the last minute. Um, so you want to make sure you leave time in case there are hiccups at the checkpoint or, um, you know, one of the things we often will see here is, you know, kids want to walk along with their stuffy mm -hmm. in the airport. <laughs> and so, you know, my suggestion is, is keep the stuffy in the bag mm -hmm. until you're in a fixed location. But overall, you know, hopefully um, just encourage girls and women to explore their interests and Hopefully, um, we'll see you at the airport sometime. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Danielle. This Thanks has been so awesome. Much. Thanks for having me. So that was a great conversation. It was so great. Yeah, yeah the fact that she uh, described her job, she's the chief of staff for the mayor of the airport. I know, yeah, right? That's kind of cool. A fun way to describe yeah. it. She does so much, too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't realize, you know, how much her job had really changed over the yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. And the fact that she started out with an interest in politics mm -hmm. and now is doing more customer service, I think it, there's some, it relates in a way. Uh, well, there's yeah. a lot of politics yes. involved at this airport. So, <laughs> yes, I think it's very relevant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the spring edition of Fly Washington magazine is coming out soon. And my understanding is on the cover is Naomi Campbell. Ooh. Yes, yes. Fancy. So, so that'll be interesting to see uh, what her story is. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Look for it in the airports. You can find it at both DCA and IAD, kind of in different locations throughout the airport. So pick one up. Um, if you are also interested in the honor flight info that Danielle was talking about, we'll have a link in the show notes that goes to the website that she was referencing. Well, that is all we have for today. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email at info at the capital runway dot com. And that's a wrap. 